go and change some settings or you're going to go into the memory to view your results and you just move your cursors to move the box to what you want to do really straightforward in the settings then this is maybe things you you don't need to do on a regular basis so for example you go into the from the stop screen and you can go into the settings and then you can go into the setup for example and this is things that are fairly straightforward that are evident by the icons that they are so time and date language backlight you've got duration timers on the instrument as well so that's the uh, the stopwatch and then you've got measurement control which is where you set up your time history storage you can change your calibration reference level and you can set up audio recording so it's all very straightforward from from one screen. If you went into measurement view from there, you can pick different measurement views. So, for example, we've got OSHA setups or you can make your own as well with different parameters. And, and every time you boot up, it will simply remember the last measurement view you were in. So once you've done that once, it's pretty much going to be in the right measurement. The important thing is it doesn't matter what you select. It's always going to store every single parameter for all of those setups so it's designed that you can't make a mistake so even if someone's changed it when you weren't using it you can still download the data and change the results to what you want very very quickly because it's it's straightforward so if you went into the time and date it's very simple to change things you press the edit button use the up down left and right cursors to change it to, to things to what you want and then you just press the save key and that's how the whole methodology with the instruments work um, very similar to a, a traditional nokia phone in terms of how you navigate around very simple and straightforward in terms of the the backlight you can have it switched on and so it's not it's activated or you can have it as a key press on that way that if you left it on a tripod for a, um, doing an area of measurement over time the display will simply time out to save on battery life but typical battery life with the display on is about 11 hours from the for the three double a batteries you can adjust the cal reference level calibration reference level so for example if you've after a couple of years send your calibrator for calibration and it's the calibration level is now 114.1 decibels what you can do is now adjust that in the um, settings so when you put your calibrator on the next time it will be at the correct calibration level. So we've got this time history setting here um, that you can set the interval that you record from one second to 30 minutes. So you can record intervals right down to one second so you can store and then later analyze the time history of the noise. So especially useful if you want to leave it in a workplace for an extended period of time to see how the noise climate is varying throughout the day. And this is a screenshot from a portion of Insight software, and there's a lot of functions that you can do, for example, to analyze the time history. You can do things like add exclusion zones and notes, for example. So exclusion zones allow you to do what if type calculations if you took a specific portion of someone's noise exposure over a period of time out of the actual overall exposure um, that was stored. So again, there's lots of parameters um, that you can display. You'd probably not have as many on your graph as here. So you might have your LAVG and your LZ peak on there, but you can have um, an awful lot of them on there as you see fit. You can change things like colors and the like on there. So audio notes, um, you can switch on or off. So if you've got them on, when you start a measurement, it will automatically prompt you to record an audio note. So and it's got a two gigabyte uh, memory and that's enough for 33 hours of audio storage. So that's enough to do a, a an audio note on every single one of the 999 runs that the instrument will store. So plenty of notes that are available for audio recording. Of course, if you want to go back and review the, your data after the measurement, you can do so. So you can go back into the memory that you saw earlier on and press the view data icon. 
you can delete memory and you can even record a voice note after the measurement as well so you can do it afterwards and you can play back audio the instrument has a um a headphone jack socket on there so you can play those back but more likely you'll probably download them and then play the instrument um, um audio back from there and again because we're in the memory now the color coded screens are now blue to show that you're in the memory and i say any point in these menus you just simply press the exit key and it will pull you back to those main stop screens and then you can just navigate from there So just to give you a, an idea that, about the software or Insight software, so the instrument will download via USB um, connector, the, the cable that we provide that will come with our instrument kits. And this is a, a simple screen, a screenshot of the software, but it's worth me just saying how a little bit about how it works. We think a little bit like um, an email system where you've got your inbox. So when you're connecting to it, the the measurements download to the folders in the top left a bit like an inbox and in fact you can create a tree structure there for different sites people places and then where just where you've got the um, arrow pointing to this audio note those rows of data are your overall cumulative rows of data and you can customize all of these views as per legislation for example for osha hc or osha pal or a combination of them accordingly to what you want to look at and then as you click on one of those, it will populate the time history graph that you see underneath. And you've got different tabs for summary, octave and profile. So here we're seeing the time history profile. And with these icons where you can just hover over them and it will tell you the functionality, you can do things like add notes. You can um, change colors, uh, change axis. You can um, do those exclusion zones and you can probably just see this tabular data just above the graph is where it will show all of the recalculated values from the exclusion zones. Um, any of these as well have got other menus. So, for example, you can right click in most places and it will give you the same menu to make it simple um, to operate by having different ways of doing the same thing. You'll see there that if you've got an audio note present, it will show the icon that's a little speaker. And then you've got a playback bar so you can play back that audio note and listen back to it. So you can say maybe who it was measured, what they were doing, what their job role is, how long they're exposed to a certain amount of noise um, or what noise control measures are already in place. This is Insight software, which downloads as well to for multiple of our instruments. Likewise, as well, another popular instrument, the D-Badge 2 noise dosimeter. So just to say, in terms of ordering this instruments, there's a couple of different models. So there's the CL620 is the main part number structure. And you can get an, an A version, which is broadband, and B is octave. So if you want the frequency analysis on there, then you can get that as well. And we do a class one or type one uh, model. So, oh, oh, sorry, there should be a, a two there. So class or type two. So there's basically those four part numbers that you can order from. Likewise, we do instrument kits. So that'll come in a kit case with all the things that you need, such as your download cable, your calibrator, batteries, for example. It comes with a handy field guide so that you can get started. And there's a full manual, manual that you can download from our website, as well, of course, your calibration certificates for both the instrument and your um, calibrator as well. So just a little summary of some technical details if people are interested. So in terms of the RMS range, it goes from 20 decibels up to 140 dB, um, up to 143 dB in terms of the peak noise. And it is measuring that AC and the Z weighting all together at once. So effectively designed so that it, that's why it can take all of your measurement parameters, simultaneous fast, slow and impulse time weightings as well. Your thresholds are selectable, but it will, of course, set defaults if you set, select the default setups. 
and it's compliant with the national the normal standards that you'd expect for sound level meters both the iec standard and the ansi standard um, i've gone over the memory there in terms of the audio notes and then on the b model you've got the frequency analysis which will go right up to 16 kilohertz and the audio notes let's say it's um, give good level of speech, similar to what you get on a mobile phone in terms of that type of quality. Battery life, as I say, starts off at 11 hours with the, the battery light, with the backlight on um, for three AA batteries. Can power it by mains, of course, as well, or via the USB socket. So I hope that's given you a good summary of the enhanced sound level meter. Um, so, so <laughs> Excuse me. So the additional features of time history, audio notes, and the larger memory, coupled with the existing instrument that was designed to be very simple of you, to use, measure all of your parameters um, simultaneously for any workplace noise setup. So again, simple operation prevents errors during operation, and more importantly, switch on and go in a very intuitive way, so you get an up and running with your noise at work surveys as you need to. So if you're interested in seeing more, then um, you can email us at info-us at casellasolutions.com, our website, casellasolutions.com, or if you go into the area HCE conference, then you can come to our booth there as well. And we've got those products that can be available for demonstration and to be able to see those as well. So. I'll hand over to to Kay now and um, to look at after any questions or anything else that people want to make, may want to ask. And thank you very much for your time. Okay, great. Thanks, Tim. It looks like we have about six or seven minutes left for questions. Just a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please type it into the chat window on the right side of your screen and either send it to all panelists or everyone. Um, the first question I have, Tim, is um, what was the philosophy when designing the CEL 620? So, yeah, it was, it was definitely really about ease of use. Um, it's really designed to be as straightforward as, as possible. I think with looking at previous generations of instruments, you had to go in and really set up every single weighting, every single frequency um, setting, every single parameter that you want to go. And we found that when we were talking to customers, we'd see the results of downloading and most of it would be right, but maybe one parameter was wrong. And you just had to go and and go into lots of different menus to set up what you wanted. So we just wanted to make it as straightforward and as easy as possible. Even, um, you know, an industrial hygienist knows, uh, has got a lot of acoustic knowledge. Other people use these instruments that have less. So it's even more important for that me prevention of, of measuring the, any incorrect parameters. Hey, thanks, Tim. Uh, I do have a question about uh, asking about the market price for this device. I wasn't sure if you were able to speak to that or if you'd prefer to connect with um, this person later. Um, up to you. Um, yeah, I think it's it, the starting price is about $1,400, I, I believe. Um, I may be a little bit out of date on that, but um, we will also follow up afterwards as well, if that's okay, Kay, and I'll send a specific price list out to anyone that's interested. So um, we can do that certainly as well. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, we'll be passing all questions along to Casella, so they'll be able to connect with you all um, afterwards. Uh, the next question I have, Tim, is what makes this product suited to industrial hygienists? Again, um, in terms of how um, the instrument is designed to be very quick to get up and running and, and really to match the features to what an industrial hygienist is, is wanting to get out of the measurements. So, to be able to understand an individual's noise exposure, to be able to um, do the work throughout the day for a noise survey that they want to do, but more importantly, to get the data out into a format that they want that's going to be useful really to do what they want to achieve, which is ultimately going to be to reduce a person's exposure. The, the instrument is about getting and making things very simple and then ultimately the software as well to make things as straightforward for an industrial hygienist or health and safety professional to get that data out and, and do what they need to do with it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question I have comes from Dave who asks, can you record an entire 15 minute walkthrough to listen to later or is this just for taking notes? 
Um, you, you can't do an entire 15 minute one because the maximum limit for an individual audio recording is is specifically um, 120 seconds. We do have our next instrument up, which is the 630 series. Which again, is not a massive cost difference and a simple, a similar philosophy in, in how it works, uh, but has additional models for environmental monitoring where you can do um, a hold down feature and what we call markers. So you can mark a specific section um, and you can have that for as, as pretty much as long as you want, I think, from memory. Um, and so, yeah, the, the 630 series will do that specifically for extended audio recording of whatever you want, rather than just for audio notes. Okay, thanks, Tim. Uh, the next question I have is, I've already got a CEL 620, can it be upgraded? It can, it depends on your, um, the age of the instrument, because we have changed hardware. I'd encourage if we could get your details and we could, we could, and with your serial number, if you could send that over to us, um, you can e email that direct email in, 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 that you see on the screen now and, and ask that question or uh, ask Kay to, to forward on your details and I'll reply to you directly. So yes, as long as it's not, um, depending on the age. Okay, thanks, Tim. Uh, I'll give it just another minute here. I don't see any uh, further questions in the chat. I didn't know if there were any concluding thoughts or anything you wanted to share before we wrapped up. Just want to say, yeah, thanks very much for your time. And I'll make sure that if you if you forward on any additional queries or any of the queries that are cropped up that need follow up, I'll make sure I I do so that so that everyone gets their, their answer. And as I say, if you come into the industrial AIHC conference, then We'll be there for a face-to-face -face demo so you can see the instrument in the in the flesh, so to speak. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, since there aren't any more questions, we'll go ahead and conclude today's product demo. I wanted to thank Tim Turney for his presentation, Casella for sponsoring today's product demo webinar, and all of our participants. Please visit aija.webvent.tv in the coming weeks for information about more new Synergist webinars later this year. Thanks everyone again and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, thank you everyone. Yeah, thank you. This actually concludes today's product demo. Thank you for attending. The recording will be available at aiej.webvent.tv. We will send all registrants an email tomorrow with that link. And please visit our event calendar to sign up for future webcasts. Mm -hmm.